Let me just read you this little uh, write-up about what took place in the Welsh Revival. Now, there were two Welsh Revivals. People don't know that they think the Welsh Revival came in 1904. That was the second one. There was one in, 18, I believe, 1856. One of the songs from 1856 um, said, The foolish world around me sage thinks I'm drunk or mad with rage. Drunk doubtless, yes, I'm drunk and odd, but drunken with the wine of God. So this one took place in 1904. God used a young man, 26 years of age, by the name of Evan Roberts. Homes, streets, mines, factories, schools, theaters, drinking saloons were all shut down because of the presence of God. I mean, all that's really been shut down today. America's opening up, but in other countries totally shut down, not because of the glory of God in that sense of a tangibility to the presence of God, but because of, a, because of witchcraft and because of fear. But the write-up that I'm reading to you is from a book on the account of the Welsh Bible, and here's what it said. The sense of the Lord's presence was everywhere. It pervaded, nay, it created the spiritual atmosphere it matters not where one went. The consciousness of the reality of the nearness of God followed. Felt, of course, in the revival gatherings. Now watch this now, which is what I'm believing for this next wave. It was no by means confined to them. It was felt in homes, on the streets, in mines, in factories, in schools, and even in theaters and drinking saloons. The strange result was that wherever people gathered became a place of awe. Places of amusement and carousal were practically emptied. Many were the instances of men entering public houses, ordering drinks, and turning on the heels, leaving them on the counters untouched. The sense of the Lord's presence was such as practically to paralyze the arm that would raise the cup to the lips. So... So you got your booze, and you're going to pick it up to drink, and you, <laughs> you can. Your arm is paralyzed, or the cup is frozen to the bar. Grown men. I'm sure they tried everything. You know what I mean? I'm going to lift this thing. I'm going to drink my booze. Try to get a full shot if you can, so you can show, okay, here's the cup, okay? I'm trying to demonstrate it. When you can't lift it because it's frozen to the counter, because of the presence of God, not because they closed the bars down because of a disease. It's almost like the enemy knows what's coming and he wants to preempt it. I've got to stop it. You cannot stop what's coming. You cannot stop. I'm talking about a great awakening, the wind of heaven blowing. Just like you cannot stop a hurricane. You cannot stop what's coming. Another great spiritual awakening. And every one of you watching are going to be a part of it. So it says football teams and the like were disbanded. Not because of COVID-19. Not because they were not allowed to play. I watched, they're starting soccer in Germany now. They're telling the teams, now when you come to get the ball, turn your head sideways so you don't breathe. What? Soccer is a contact sport. How are you going to, whatever. No brains. So it says here, football teams and the like were disbanded. Their member finding greater joy in the testimony of the Lord's grace than in the games. The pit bottoms and the galleries became a place of prayer and praise. When the miners gathered to worship, ere they dispersed to their several stalls. So they actually had to shut the mines down for a couple of weeks because the miners had such foul language. 
and they trained the donkeys to move by commandments of foul language. And now God touched them, sanctified the mouth. They couldn't use the language. So the donkeys, <laughs> the donkeys didn't know what to do. So you could just say, you know, they're trying to pull the donkey or prod the donkey. The donkey just stands there because he doesn't know what to do. He's been trained using foul language. So it took them like two weeks to retrain the animals so they could get the minds operational again. That means Jesus has come to town. It said, even the children in the daycares came under the spell of God. It, it, the writing says the spell of God. Stories could be told of how they would gather in any place they could, where they would sing and pray in the most impressive fashion. A very pretty story is that of a child of about four in an infant class who held up his hand to call the teacher's attention. And the teacher said, well, A, or whoever it was, inquired the teacher, what is it? Swift and telling came the words, please, teacher, do you love Jesus? And that was all. No, it was not all. The arrow reached its mark. And then, then the teacher came to the Lord through a four-year-old. And it's only a year or so since the death that ended her great missionary career in India through a four-year-old. A four-year-old. Not some great apostle. A four-year-old. A four-year-old. Do you love Jesus? She gets saved. And then God sends her to India. I see it sweeping. Whole nations. Whole nations. It's the wind of heaven. This all pervading sense of the presence of God was among the children. One of the stories was from an area in Wales called, I hope I pronounce it right, Ross, R-H-O-S. Sorry if I'm butchering the Welsh language. Someone overheard a little child ask another, do you know what happened? At Ross, no, I don't, except that Sunday comes every day now. Don't you know? No, I don't. Why, Jesus has come to live in our town. Lift your hands. The presence of God is filling rooms right now, homes right now, touching individuals right now. You were brought in the kingdom of God for such a time as this. God will do it again. He's looking for yielded vessels. He's looking for individuals that will say, Lord, here I am. Take me. I don't think I'm anything. Lord, I'm nothing, but you are everything. Let God come. Let him touch you right now, right where you are. Let him come and fill you. Let him come and fill you. Just lift those hands right now. Fathers, you've done this so many, many times before. In the meetings, you told me, you said, son, give me an opportunity to move and I'll move. Come now. Let your fire fall. Let your fire fall on every individual. In Jesus' name.